Hello and welcome to episode 66 of Beyond the Brick. I'm Joshua Hanlon. And I'm Matthew K. And this week, our guest is James Pagram. Uh, you might know him on Flickr and Mock Pages as Peggy JDB. That's his username over there. Um, he is a mod over on the Flickr, the Greco Roman Flickr group, and he is 35 years old, a bu building surveyor, and uh, he is a member of Brickish and New Breed, which are a uh, New Breed, I believe, is kind of an, an online lug, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're on Flickr at the moment. Okay, okay. So, and then, of course, Brickish is the, the UK lug over there. And, yeah, we yeah. have another another guest from the UK on. We've had a good good stretch of guests here over the last month. We've had uh, two or three from the UK now, so that's good. We're re reaching out across the pond to some other builders. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, James, if you just want to start us off by uh, telling us a little bit about when you started building. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been brought up with Lego. Um, I've got an older brother, so it's always been around me. Um, I made a model of Mary Rose when I was probably about eight or so. Um, and, yeah, just kept going from then. Yeah, that's interesting. So uh, did you went to Legoland in Denmark when you were younger, right? Yeah. Um, at, at the time, there was only one Legoland. Um, so it's pretty exciting to go over to Denmark and, and go around there. Um, I remember getting a set of castle figures, which I was going to use on my my model. Um, yeah, it's it it's great. So have you been back since? I've not been to Denmark. No, um, I've been to the Windsor Legoland a couple of times. It's very cool. So what was it? What was it like back in the day? Do you have any? Remember anything? Um, yeah, my parents wouldn't let me go on any of the rides, but um, <laughs> I remember a massive model of the uh, DFDS ship, which uh, stuck in my mind because we sailed there. Um, oh. So, so yeah, this boat was going up and down um, the Legoland Park. There was a lot of moving things. Um, I also remember a boat with a train which uh, went on and off the. The boat, which was pretty exciting. Very cool. Yeah. Sounds sounds like pretty awesome. I that that would be cool to eventually make it to the Legoland there in in Denmark one day. Definitely. Did you ever have a dark age then? Well, not as such. I would have um, probably made less models when I was at university. Um, I didn't take my bricks with me, so. Um, yeah, I was buying a few sets at the time, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say I had a dark age as such. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that that's that's interesting. So uh, it's cool to hear some of your backstory there that you got to go to Legoland in Denmark when you were younger, and now uh, we'll definitely talk about some of your builds. I think the uh, what you're most known for currently, at least, at least, and this is the way I found out about you and uh, started looking over your builds, was your History of Britain builds that you've done. Um, uh, do you I, remember uh, how, how many you've done now in that series? Um, I think there's about 40 photos, but maybe something around 20 builds. Okay, okay. And yeah, if you aren't familiar with it, it's all chronicling the... Uh, the history of Britain. The first one I wanted to talk about here was your uh, Roman Colchester, and you can yeah. see got a picture of it right here. So this build is just extremely, extremely impressive. I thought this was was really awesome. I've always enjoyed builds from this time period. So uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that and what the different buildings are that we see here? Yeah. Um, well, I started off building the Temple of Claudius. Um, which is currently underneath the castle in Colchester. Um, that was quite interesting because I built a temple before. I tried to build the uh, Pantheon in Rome, but I didn't have enough bricks. So this was quite nice to be able to finish it. Um, and then I thought about building the theatre, which is the big semicircular building. Um, I nearly didn't build this as it goes because I was getting close to the exhibition and um, running out of time, but I was involved with um, some builds for a paper over here in Britain for um, the Olympics. I don't know if you saw it elsewhere, but there were um, 
some sort of animation of the Olympics. Um, so it kind of inspired me to build this, which I'm glad it did in the end, because the, the two next to each other, I, I was quite pleased with the way it turned out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it just turned out so cool. Like I said, and, uh, you've also got a little a little village with it, along with the, the temple buildings, and I think that that just turned out really awesome. So what's some of your favorite, uh, what's your favorite building out of all these? Um... I think I quite like the theatre just because it's got that bended facade on, on it. Um, as I said, I tried to build the Pantheon, which has got a similar kind of detail on it, but to actually be able to do that and make it complete and get the roof on, um, yeah, that was quite exciting. It was also quite funny because I had a little kitten when I just um, started building this, and the kitten loved playing inside this theatre. <laughs> he, he, um, he would jump over the wall and then he'd start running around inside. And it was quite entertaining really. <laughs> you know you're doing something right when uh, whatever you're building is large enough for a small animal to play in. <laughs> so. yeah, it's true. Very cool. Very, cool. <laughs> Very true. Good point there, Matthew. <laughs> um, I, I, the next build that I wanted to mention, continuing continuing in your uh, history of Britain, is the I believe this is the London Fire, and so yeah. you just want to uh, give give some background on this build and what what were mm -hmm. some of you I really the thing that stands out to me here is the lighting with this I think you did a great job on I think lighting yeah. and wall texture too huh? yeah. you have so many different textures going on here it's fantastic. Yeah, uh, it wasn't the stablest of builds, um, and to be honest, this <laughs> this this was a build just for the camera. Um, half these buildings don't even exist, um, but they're literally just built so that you can see this picture, and it's kind of all Lego. Um, I've actually used fishing rods in the lower half of the main building there, um, and that's to try and get the wall to look a bit rickety sort of a bit of movement going on. Um, it's getting ready to uh, collapse. Kind of. Yeah, basically. Because um, we see we see so many things with straight lines, I wanted to try and get it all bent and um, just looking really old. Definitely. So it was, it was all over the place. And um, with the lighting, I, I actually used my bike light, my rear bike light, and um, I just left the shutter on for different times and just moved the light around. Uh, I must have taken maybe 10, 20 photos, so um, this was my favorite of, of those photos. Yeah, like I said, I think it turned out great, so awesome job with that. Um, also, are the, on the wall over in the corner, um, the upper left-hand corner, I guess, is that are those chairs? Is that what makes up the wall? Um, no, they're... Um, there. I'll tell you what, I'll get it for you. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah, yeah. We, we can see it from the builder right here. So, um, basically, it's... Can you see that? Oh, yes, yeah. Okay. So it's like the... What are they, like a little ledge piece, kind of? Is that what that... Yeah, they they're basically fall out. Like a one by two by one panel piece? Yeah, that's it. I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, there you go. Yep. Oh, that's very cool. Okay, so that's how you got the wall on the one building then. Huh. Um, yeah, on one of those. It's actually, sorry, that's the one right at the back. Oh, that's the one at the back? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the one at the back. So yeah. the one on the side is um, cheeses. Cheeses? Oh. Okay. Cheeses is on a plate, and then the plate is angled. Oh. So that the cheese is then flat, sort of. You know, parallel oh, yeah. with or vertical. Yeah, that's a testament to the perspective of everything because it looks a lot bigger. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, yeah, it is. There are cheese slopes. That that's fantastic. So there is a lot to be said for building like a, a build just to be seen through one viewfinder. You know, one scene. That's fantastic. Yeah, I, t I took a risk and um, it paid off. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. So what kind of reaction have you had to uh, these your your history of Britain builds and some of these? I think I've seen some of them on the Brothers Brick and Places that people really like these. Yeah, uh, it's it's quite surprising because uh, I don't know how many British people are, are on Flickr, but um, <laughs> it's gone down well. Um, I've been quite quite pleased with the response to it. Um, 
So yeah, I've I've been been on Brothers Brick as you say a couple of times. Um, people may remember the Stonehenge build that I did, um, mm -hmm. and I did the um, play by um, of um, Julius Caesar by Shakespeare. I think that's that's been featured, and um, people may also remember the Thomas Beckett scene. Um, some some of these are actually suggestions from friends within the British Association. So this one you've got on at the moment was suggested to me by a friend. Um, this is the Colossus computer. Yeah, this is the the next build I wanted to to talk about was uh, an, yeah. continuing in your your line of British history. I think this is mm -hmm. your most recent build. Uh, the what is this? The the Bletchley Park build where the that's it. The yeah. World World War Two code breakers and that story yeah. has always fascinated me and everything that went on there. So I thought this build was really cool. So yeah, you can go ahead, like you were saying there, go ahead and tell us some of the story about it if you want. Yeah, I, I have to say I didn't know anything about this until my friend suggested it to me. Um, I think this is the first electronic computer in the world that was programmable. Um, this is actually the second version, apparently, according to Wikipedia. Um, but this this is even even half of it from what I've seen. I I didn't get to Bletchley Park to see it, but the photos show uh, almost a second bank of goodness knows what they are. But um, yeah, it was quite interesting trying to replicate it because it was it was wild. <laughs> yeah, I think you did a you did a great job getting the the little knobs and everything on those uh, like you said giant computers that they had back then. <laughs> one of, well, this is one of the first computers ever. And Definitely, so, yeah. certainly nothing compared to the little smartphones and things we have today, but nah. I think you, you did a great job replicating it. One thing that stood out to me as really cool was the floor and the way you got the reflection. Did you do something special with that? or is Reflective that just... hardwood um, floors? <laughs> well, uh, strangely enough, my, uh, my, my mother-in-law suggested um, a link cloth for cleaning around the house, so I just thought... <laughs> Um, I'm going to try this on this floor. I just breathed on it, got the cloth, and just gave it a good polish. Um, and it was a sunny day, and yeah, it is shiny. <laughs> there. It's almost like a mirror. Yeah, <laughs> Definitely. yeah it is. It is. I, but I, I think it gives it a very cool look, and it's something you don't see that real often with that such a reflective floor. Uh, with, with use, using Lego like that, so I think. It, yeah, and also the the texture of the bricks almost uh, lends itself to like you know planks on a floor. So yeah, win win. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> Very cool. So the last build I wanted to mention here, lest you think he just builds British history. Um, this is kind of a. Uh, it is. I think this is British related, but uh, it is uh, more <laughs> of a modern build and. Yeah. A couple of things that stood out to me with this. I believe this is um, some troops near Jerusalem. Is that correct, this build? Yeah, it's kind of fantasy in my own mind. Yeah, it's supposed to be near Jerusalem, yeah. Okay, yeah, a couple of things that stood out to me were the uh, the studs not on top, like base plate that you made for the whole thing, That I uh -huh. the, the different layers and textures you got with that, with having no studs was very cool. And then the vehicles, of course, as well. Some unique-looking vehicles there. So, yeah, you can go ahead and tell us about this and some of your favorite parts of it. Yeah, okay, so um, I, I kind of built this spaceship, which I, I'm ashamed of now, but I had these tanks in it, um, and they're really the best thing that came out of it, because I've then developed the tank. So I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of just playing around here, and I, I've decided that it's the Challenger 4 tank, um, development of the British Challenger tank that we currently have. Um, but rather than having tracks and wheels, um, it's in the future, so get rid of wheels, tracks, and let's have some hover engines on it. So um, that was a hover tank. Um, so then, then I've kind of built on that and decided to make a personal uh, or an armoured um, personnel carrier, which is the bigger vehicle which is sitting in front of the tank. Um, and that's got room for 12 troops. Um, so yeah, that, they're the two vehicles, and then, as you say, I went for the studs, sort of not on top, and just put in the brick on the side, and, and just went for the roads. Um, 
and signposts. I, I did a bit of research on the internet to see what signposts were like in Israel, and uh, I've copied that there. So I don't know, don't know how visible that is, but the apparently that's the right road to Jerusalem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, re really, really detailed uh, um, research that went into this build. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of trying to mix a bit of um, futuristic ideas with a bit of current reality. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and then and then the little oasis there. I've tried to use some of the newer colours, um, which weren't so so popular at the time of this build. So yeah, yeah. I I think it like I said. I think it turned out great. So that's really cool to to see it. It's all the different kinds of builds that you do. You've got your ancient ones all the way to the modern day like this. I thought. I always, I always think that's uh, interesting when, when builders don't just build in one time period, they can build anything. I think that's a real testament to, to the skill. So very nice. And uh, now you do have a couple of builds that um, you, you have yourself that you can show us on the camera. So if you just want to show us uh, one, a couple of those right now, you can kind of um, tell us some of your favorite parts of those. Okay, so... Um... Carrying on from what you've just shown, um, this is a hopper ambulance. Mm -hmm. So um, at the back here, we've got some doors that open up. So we've got the medical bay there. Now one of the things I like to do is, um, is get the underside nice and flat as well. So as you can see there, it's it's all tiled and there's some flaps there and, and the like. Yeah, so you keep it nice and smooth on the bottom then? Yeah, yeah. I know I know some people like studs, but I, I try and get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and these doors kind of open at the front whilst taking the cabin off. So yeah, that's some nice little play features. Yeah, that's on there. very cool. So what what's your favorite favorite technique on this build then? Um, just trying to get it all nice and smooth. There's some bricks on the side here, so that that whole panel comes off. I'm not gonna do it now. <laughs> It'll probably fall apart. But yeah, it's just the overall smoothness of it. Sure. Probably my favorite on that. Yeah, great, great job with that. And then you also had a uh, micro Roman temple build, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, January last year on the um, Greco Romano group on Flickr, we had a competition, um, and I built this micro scale temple. Mm -hmm. So I have been looking at rocks. I've been sort of looking at rocks over the recent years. Um, I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to show this. But there's some, uh, there's these rocks here. Can you see that, guys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So those rocks, they're, they're definitely totally off the grid. Um, they're twisted in, in every dimension. Um, so that, that was my favorite part of that build. Yeah, that's that's really very cool. So, how how do you achieve the the temple build there at the micro scale? Then I know I've seen a, a few different micro temples, and people usually sometimes use the gates or whatever. What piece did you use for that? Um, so I've got a row of head headlight bricks, and then I've got bars going through the headlight bricks. So they're not full length. Um, they're two studs high, effectively. Um, so there's a bit sticking down underneath. Okay. And I've used used the little rail to give a bit of detail around the edge of the temple itself. Yeah, very very nice. So I appreciate you showing this uh, those there on on the camera yourself. That's always cool to have builds that you can talk about right there with your camera. So now I think we'll uh, move into some of your your projects planned for the future. Do you have any builds coming up? Any big collaborations or anything? Yeah. Um. In, in, in the UK, we have a, a rather large event in October um, called STEAM or GWLS in a, a town called 
in Swindon. So there's a group of us doing a medieval build, um, and I'm putting a castle together for that. So it's been a pretty long-term plan that we've been working on it for a year or so, just working out layouts and what else, and now we're sort of in the building mode. Okay. Now, is that the castle? Do you have built somewhat that you can show us, or is that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just, just so yeah, you... This. you yeah, have it built right here beside you, so you can. That's uh... it. Um. There's an early glimpse at his castle that he'll be bringing to the. Uh, Steam convention, if you can make it there. Oh my goodness. There we go. So you got a, got a quick glimpse there. Got some of the awesome stuff that you'll be able to see there that he is he is bringing to the convention. <laughs> th uh, thanks for showing us that. That's really cool. I'm glad you uh, could have that set up there. Very cool. So now, um, what, uh, what conventions, speak, speaking of conventions, what conventions do you think you'll be able to make it to this year? It would definitely be that one. Um, there, there's some others in the UK. Um, we go to the National Space Center in Leicester. Um, if I can get to that, then I may well try to get to that one as well. Okay. So uh, then, do you have any um, stories from conventions you've been to? I think you, you've made it to uh, Brickish in the last, I mean, sorry, not Brickish, the Steam convention in the last couple of years. And yeah. uh, do you have any cool stories you want to tell us about that? Um, okay, so yeah, two years ago I, I built a castle similar to, to the one I'm building now. And um, people may know Sly, Sly Al on Flickr, Barney Main. So Barney laid siege to my castle, um, and as part of that, we, we did a little bit of an enactment from the uh, Monty Python film, Holy Grail, where they put a cow on a catapult and fired it at the castle. Um, <laughs> so so that, that brought a few smiles to people. Um, and then last year, the, the model that we were looking at earlier of Colchester, um, I was reenacting the sacking of that by Bud Boudicca, and um, yeah, we had some strange characters join in the attack because Schlob somehow got on top of the temple, and um, Rex from um, Toy Story was there as as well as Bullseye. So um, yeah, we we diverted a little bit from the true story and uh, had a bit of fun there. <laughs> never, <laughs> never hurts to add a little humor to some of your builds. It always makes it more interesting <laughs> for people to look at. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so now, if you want to get a hold of us at the show, uh, you can email me at joshua at brickpodcast dot com or Matthew at matthew br at brickpodcast dot com, and we're also on Twitter, Google Plus, and Facebook. You just search Beyond the Brick on any of those platforms. You can find us to keep up with everything we're doing. And uh, if you'd like to keep up to date with the newest episodes of Beyond the Brick via email, you can go to emailupdate dot brickpodcast dot com and get emailed with every new episode of Beyond the Brick. So now, James, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about what you've uh, done to build your LEGO collection over the years? Um, yeah, I guess just over the years I I've bought sets. Um, most of my family know what I want for birthday and Christmas, so uh, LEGO's on the list. Um, I guess as well, you know, you start making a model, and you just don't have the bits that you need, so um, plenty of brickling orders. Um, also, uh, really happy the other day, my wife got some Lego from a colleague, and um, yeah, I've got two massive boxes, so there's some real nice pieces in there, which I'm adding to my collection. Those are the best, right? Uh, they, they are definitely the best. Oh yeah. Free free Lego, which would cost a <laughs> bomb of brickling. <laughs> Definitely. That's always cool. So uh, then, if I think we'll end out the interview here with uh, what? What if you could have Lego make one set or theme? What? What would be your dream Lego set? Um, it's got to be a, a Roman theme. Um, 
been looking forward to something like that for years. Um, it's been great having the, the figures in the uh, collectible series that have mm -hmm. come out recently. But it would be really nice to have those in uh, easy access. Get loads of Roman legionnaires. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. I think an, an ancient theme would be very cool. And uh, let's see, Series 10, I think there there is a new Roman minifig in Series 10, so that's now two or three different uh, Roman minifigs they've come out with in the collectible minifigure series, so so that always helps. Definitely. I've got fans. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to, we'll have to keep an eye out on that then, and so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think that's all the questions we have for you. It was great having you on, James. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks to you too, guys. Good show. And as always, you can find links to all the builds we talked about on this show in the description of this video below. And you can find links to James uh, Flickr and mock pages as well, so you can keep up to date with him and all the latest builds over there. And if you want to keep up to date with all the latest content from Beyond the Brick, I'd encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube page, and you can see everything we release. So thanks for watching.